Yo, what's going on guys, it's Houston Sports, so back in the video today, and today we're going to be talking about the Houston Astros and Jake Myers, and how this could be Jake Myers' last chance with the Houston Astros, and if it will be Jake Myers' last chance to succeed as the center fielder for the Houston Astros, and we'll see what happens. Um, Jake Myers has been with the team for three seasons now, this will be his fourth season, uh, came into the Astros organization or Astros, the Astros Major League team late in the 2021 season. And man, did this kid right away look like he was going to be something special. He was so good as a rookie for this Astros team to the point where he was welcomed on to join the Astros playoff roster. He did so well. He joined the playoff roster and was even playing and starting as a rookie for the Astros until he got hurt in the ALDS which he uh, tore something in his shoulder and required surgery, and he just hasn't been the same since. I mean, I'll go over what he did in 2021 in only 49 games with only 163 plate appearances and 146 at-bats. He scored 22 runs with 38 hits, 8 doubles, 6 home runs, 20 RBIs, only struck out 50 times, which he played... We can go to the next season, 2022, he played 52 games, which is three more than he did in 2021, and struck out a total of 54 times. So, um, although he did play more, though. so um, But had a batting average of 260 as well, and had an OPS of 761, and his on-base percentage was 323, and his slugger was 438 so uh and also ops plus was 107 i mean jake myers in his rookie year was great and then he came back in 2023 and just stinked i mean 52 games 160 plate appearance 150 at bats 13 runs scored 34 hits six doubles uh had two triples though one home run, 15 RBIs, his batting average is 227, went down by 33. His on-base percentage was 269, that went down a lot as well. His, o- his OPS took a big hit. Uh, his OPS fell to 582, was previously seven, uh, seven, previously 761. And then last season, you go, let's go to 2023, he started to look a little bit like you know, what we saw from him in his rookie year. I mean, he wasn't, you know, as as good as he was because, I mean, in 49 games in 2021, we saw him have basically the, kind of like the same numbers that he did in 2020 and in 2021. In 2021, he had six home runs and 20 RBIs in 49 games. And then in 112 games, uh, he had 10 home runs and 33 RBIs last season in, in the 2023 season. But the thing is, is he was a lot better than he was in the in the 2022 season. I mean, it couldn't get much worse than it was for Jake in the 2022 season. But in the 2023 season, it was looking better for him. And at times, he got off to the season, he got to, you know, to start the year, he got off to a bad start, and in the middle of the year, he started to get it going for the Astros, and was starting to look like the same player we saw in 2021, but then, and this is one of the things I didn't like from Dusty Baker, and we saw it with Yanner Diaz, I think I feel like Jake Myers and Yanner Diaz were two guys who deserved more playing time uh, for the Astros lineup, he just kind of disappeared, and we didn't see him in the playoffs at all, he didn't play in the playoffs at all, he even was not even on the ALCS roster. So uh, the Astros want to give him a more chance to potentially grab the center field job in, you know, 2024 in spring training. I think he's going to get a lot of playing time in spring training. I think you're going to see him the most out of all the players probably uh, because this, I think the Astros are at the end of the line here. I think they're like, we like McCormick, but we also like Jake, and we want to give him a chance. I think we want to give both guys an equal chance. I think that's what it kind of was last year in spring training for you know with the two guys. It was an open competition throughout the whole spring training. And you know to start the year, we kind of saw both players start. Dusty kind of kept that fair, both players. I mean, I think Myers started opening day, and then uh, we saw Chas the next – I think – I'm pretty sure in that opening series against the Chicago White Sox last year, we played them four games to start the series. I remember 
Jake started the first two games in that series, and then Chas started the, the last two. So, I mean, to start the season, he kind of kept it kind of even, kind of carried that competition between the two guys into the regular season last year. Uh, I don't know if it gets that far this year because Chas, you know, I really like Chas. I think he's a really good player. But I also really like Jake as well. Um, and unless the Astros don't sign somebody, you never know. Chas might be playing more left field than he is playing, you know, than he is playing center. I mean, I think Chas will play a lot at center field. But the the Astros, they like to give Jordan the, the day off from the outfield a lot. They like to put Jordan at the DH. And with Michael Brantley gone, him, you know, Michael Brantley being now a, um, you know, retired, Brantley retired. And just remember to start the year while Brantley was injured last year, we had Corey Jolks who did a fantastic job. I think he probably will be in on the Astros spring training roster, but I don't expect him to make the roster, the opening day roster, unless he goes crazy in spring training like he did last year. So in left field, if you're going to want to put Jordan at DH playing left, it's going to either be Dubon or Chas McCormick. And as an Astros fan, I think a lot of Astros fans can go out there. I, I could a hundred percent see a lot of Astros fans agreeing with this. That we'd we'd rather see Chas McCormick in left field than more see Dubon. I, I I trust Dubon, and I but I like Dubon in center more than I like him in left. And I think if I had to choose, it it'd be Chas in left and Dubon in center. I think that's the Astros' plan. But let's say Jeremy Pena is going to get the day off from shortstop. Then the guy that's going since Dubon is the utility guy, that means Dubon's going to be at shortstop. The thing is with Dubon, if we see some uh, you know an infielder go down, get injured, go in the IL for 10 days, that's an, that's a, that's an outfielder that the Astros lose because he's our utility guy. He's going to be like, look at what happened with Jose Altuve last year where he goes down, he breaks his thumb, Dubon becomes the second baseman. He did a hell of a job for the Astros when Altuve was uh, gone for the first couple of months of the season or however long it was when Altuve uh, you know, didn't, you know, was, was gone from the mix for the Astros. Um, I'll say if, if someone gets hurt, we don't want that to happen. But if Bregman, Pena, Altuve, I'm not going to go to Bregu because I don't, I don't think the Astros would go to Dubon to play first base. But one of the three of Bregman, Pena, or Altuve goes on the IL. That means Dubon's going to, that, that means Dubon's going to end up playing in the infield every day, um, instead of the outfield. And then that means more playing time for Jake Myers. Uh, because if someone's getting a day off or somebody's injured in the infield, like Altuve, Pena, Bregman, Dubon's not in the outfield. He's not available in the outfield because he will be in the infield for the Astros most likely. So then that means you'd probably have Chas in left and Jake Myers in center most likely. Um, but I, I do think this is probably Jake's last chance to get things to, together and I think with the new coaching staff, or not the new, I wouldn't say new coaching staff, but with the new manager, with Joe Espada and Dusty Baker gone, I think uh, Joe Espada is going to give some of these younger guys who deserve a chance, like Jake Myers and Yanner Diaz, a more equal chance than they should have got last season. I think what happened with Jake Myers and Yanner Diaz, I, I think both guys should have played more. Uh, I think Yanner Diaz on a, is on a different, higher level, just because of the fact that his competition was playing terrible in Maldonado, and he was playing so good. Uh, the different, it's kind of different with Jake Myers because of the fact that um, his the, the you know the player that opposed to him that's playing in his position was playing really good with Chas McCormick. Um, but I feel like he kind of deserved a chance as well, and we did see some good things from him throughout the season. I think Jake Myers deserves a chance, but if he can't get things together this season. Uh, I think he could be somebody at the trade deadline in July or, or early August, late July, early August when we see the trade deadline happen, who could be moved off the Astros roster very likely if he doesn't get everything together and, and you know gets back to the form he was in in 2021. I think that's most likely uh, what the Astros want to see from him. I think they want him maybe not to get back to that level where he was playing so good is that batting average was 260. It's six home runs and 28 RBIs and a total of only 
49 games as a rookie. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the ceiling for them. I don't know if that's where they want him to get to, but I think that's I think they want him to get near to that level. Um they want him to be they want him to play. I think they want him to play as good for him to compete with Dubon and Chas McCormick because at times Jake was playing good last year, but he was not up to their level. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why Dusty kind of kept him out of the lineup. And for once, I cannot actually understand a move that Dusty Baker was making last year. But let me your thoughts on Jake Myers in the comment section. Astros fans, and peace out. Go Astros.